axis is probably about an R15 right now. We're getting about an R25 in the belly and the walls. We build everything from scratch from the ground up. It's a motor vehicle. There's a VIN number and a title. Look at it as an RV on placement, but it's built like a house. So these are three of our 10 models that we have on display here. Right here is the Mansion Elite. Then we have the Limited model and the Bunkhouse model. People want the tiny home, but they don't want to be cramped. So they like the tiny home, but want it to just feel like a regular house. It's the freedom of travel, not being tied down to a lo certain location. You could pick up your whole entire house and leave. Just because you're going tiny doesn't mean you have to be miserable. If you have a three quarter ton truck, you just hook it up and go wherever you want. So basically you could take four guys hunting in the middle of nowhere, two weeks to a month, but have everything on board that you need. My name is Mike Partana with Uncharted Tiny Homes. I am owner, lead designer, and lead builder. So this is our actual Mansion Elite model, which it has one of the coolest kitchens because we don't have any downstairs bedrooms. So this actually has a full L-shaped kitchen with a little bit of dining right here. Cooktop is a 24 inch cooktop, cast iron, stainless steel. This is basically a chef kitchen for a tiny home. It's crazy how when you're looking at the outside, you don't realize this is inside, but we do full size everything to make it feel comfortable. We took house design and made it into a tiny home not making a gimmicky tiny home where you have to put things away and convert things. We believe in just designing it into the space because we don't believe that you need to put your life away every day to use something else. Right above me is a full-size queen bed, nightstands, everything. So what we did, we did USB outlets there for charging. You could fit a king bed up there, two twins, but this one will sleep four adults. With the couch pulled out, this actually goes into a full-size bed as well. So we have sleeping for six adults in this one. The biggest downside of having a tiny home is the size. I mean, realistically, it's small, but um, it's appealing to a lot of people. Like we built them for families of five and six and they're completely comfortable. Everybody has their own rooms and everything. It's a small space. They are in 20 acres in Williams, so that helps out a lot. So this is our other loft space. It's uh, basically the exact same size as the other ones. There were two eight foot lofts up here. This does a queen bed as well, so it's a mirror image with the bathroom and kitchen. So we kind of want to make sense of everything. We mainly did the tall ceilings in the middle, the entryway, to kind of give you that grand feel right when you walk in so you don't feel closed in. It's more of an illusion of space. It's all about perception, and I, I always say don't go with square footage. We get a lot of calls saying, I need a 600 square foot. I'm like, okay, what layout do you want? Do you want lofts? Do you know, There's so many questions involved, people asking for costs. I'm like, I don't know, what do you want? What I do is mainly tell people off the model on how it feels because um, we have the 18 footer and the flat model, 30 feet long. They're both the exact same square footage. As of this one, we shrunk this three feet for the client. So this is actually even bigger in our normal model. We actually have the whole bathroom on one side and this whole 10 foot of walk-in closet. You do full size front loader, washer and dryers, full built-ins, shoe racks, whatever you want. So. Um, we kind of heard at shows where we didn't have storage, so I came home and designed a walk-in closet in a tiny home. It's remote controlled, thermostat controlled, so you just leave it on heat or cool, and it will keep this house toasty in the winter and cool during the summer, even in Arizona, especially with this spray foam insulation. It's like a Yeti cooler in here, so it just it's all fully air sealed, so it keeps the temperature in, so it runs half the time. We're normally about a two month build time. However, if it's a highly custom one, we've had one that took up to five months to build just because it was so intricate and there were so many options and styling things and custom features that we had to do and design, it took a lot longer. We start with a foundation, which in our case, it's a steel trailer foundation instead of concrete or footers and that kind of stuff. So this is how we start with all our tiny homes. Uh, we have a custom built trailer for us. A local trailer manufacturer builds them. It's all raw steel. Uh, we just have to do a little bit of grinding, just a little spots just to make sure like the subfloor lays nice and flat and we do all our plumbing electrical everything drain lines are built into the trailer nothing is down below so everything is protected from the elements we have a belly skin right down here and then what we do is we actually do a closed cell spray foam so all your plumbing and electrical is fully insulated from the elements and this is the foundation of the house so you can tow wherever you want park it forever kind of built to last all right, so this is our spray foam. We do a closed cell spray foam, so it's 100% air sealed when we do it. So you can hear the difference. And your AC unit is gonna run basically a quarter of the time as traditional insulation. So that way your bills are a lot less, especially if we're doing full solar homes. This helps out night and day. The AC unit just doesn't draw that much on the system. It's tiring. I mean, I'm tired a lot. 
they always say, oh, I want to own my company because so I don't work nine to five. It's like, cool, now you're working 24 seven, you know, and that is so true. <laughs> Tiny homes are appealing to a wide variety from young to old just because it gives people freedom. They're great from cabins to in-law suites, guest houses, rentals, anything that you could do mobile. So it's very appealing because people don't need to be tied down to a certain city or part of the country. They can travel but still have their house with them. They don't have to pack up their house, they just hook up their house and go. So it's a little bit different of a lifestyle. The Limited right behind me has, it's just a very small little good rental. There's not a lot of storage space, but it's a cool little novelty tiny home. It's only 18 feet long. So this one is the inside of our Limited model. This is normally full kitchen in here. We still have the massive sink. We downgraded the fridge a little bit just because this is another rental. But same size fridge, we normally have a huge fridge right here. And then on this side is normally a cooktop. And then this is the other part of the kitchen. However, we made this actually dining for two people. And then you get a little bit extra storage right here. And then we've put another window right above it. So you're facing outside to whatever you're parked next to. The problems with RVs are usually quality and they just pump them out as fast as they can. Uh, not all RV builders are like that. There's some great quality ones but we just give people the option to customize more than RVs and get more house features inside of a tiny home. I designed our very first model around a full-size couch because these are small spaces. You don't want an uncomfortable window seat. When you're not sleeping, you're usually on your couch hanging out or outside. So it was very important to give you an actual comfortable big couch. TVs, we do minimum 40 inch all the way up to 65 in our tiny home. So it's pretty much endless. We have models on display, but they were designed for somebody else. But then you make it your own. So if you don't like the walls or the flooring or the countertops, tell us what you want, you get it. We have 10 different models. And what you see here, say for example, this is 95,000. Your 95,000 won't look like this because we design and build for you. If you don't like this sink, you get the sink you want. If you don't like these countertops, we change them. So treat it as designing a custom home, just a regular stick built home. The sky's the limit. Obviously we have to uh, factor in weight, but it's all about your budget. It's between you and your wallet. I just hope you get there. Once they get past the like cost of it, they realize what they're getting for their money, but the versatility of owning a tiny home is where it's very appealing. It's the freedom of travel, not being tied down to a lo certain location. You could pick up your whole entire house and leave. So we're, it's a huge uptick right now. We're swamped, but um, it's great. The biggest thing people ask or think I do is live in a tiny home. I don't want to. I mean, I, I mean I'm just gonna get that out there. I'm in them all day long. I build them, so I don't wanna go home to one. Um, I guess I'm in a 1400 square foot house with two kids and a dog and a wife and everything. So it's a small house. This is our bunkhouse model. This is our one of our best selling models just because we have the dual floor plan. We have the loft above us, bedroom over here. Uh, we're currently in the kitchen area, which is massive. We're about 16 feet of countertop space on both sides. So massive sink. This is actually like a Kohler Volt sink. So it's a really nice deep sink, single basin. On this side, we actually have our full cooking area. So we do full size ranges. We do slide in ovens as well. Right behind me, we have a full size bathroom. It's basically the size of a hall bathroom in a residential house. We have a five foot shower. We did tile on this one, um, shower curtain. On this side, we have a full vanity, sink, faucet, everything that you need. And then right above me, we actually have a 12 foot loft. So this is a massive loft. I know it's overkill. So this is kind of set up as like a kid's room. So you have a little kid's playing area with games, but two twin beds. If it's a full queen bed up there, kind of whatever preference you are, it's just a massive loft. It's kind of cool though. This thing is pretty awesome. It works well for the space, but what it does, it actually folds out into a bed and you can still slide by the stairs. But then when you pull this end down, this is the back of the couch. It's a full bed, but then you can go one step further and put the cushions back here and it's a movie lounger. So you got the best of both worlds over here on the staircase. This is kind of like our entertainment center. We normally have a TV here. We have TV prep. We just have a picture right now, but it's a kind of a cool area. You have your ottoman built in, extra storage, extra sleeping. So it works really well for the space. 
um, and it's very easy to convert. You just kind of just lift it up and slide it back and it's short and simple. So right now this is a queen size bed. So it's basically the same footprint as our lofts, just downstairs. So you can use this as an office, a nursery, just storage, kind of whatever you're looking for. These are about a four by four window. So we want to make sure it's a lot of natural light. We like our windows just because it's a small space and it opens it up. It kind of expands it with getting the big windows in here. When we do full off the grid as well, this is where we house all your basically computer systems systems, batteries, charge controllers, and everything on this half of the bed in the storage bed frame. So that way it's easy access, it's protected from the elements, it's it longevity, it helps a lot. Then you still have the whole half of the bed for storage, that's with our solar options. If we don't, and we're just plug and play, massive amount of storage underneath here. We do full solar, battery bank, inverter, charge controller, everything for solar, it's basically a power plant on board. Um, we also do composting or incinerator toilets, fresh water tanks up to 150 gallons per house. So we set them up to however people are gonna use it off grid, but it's just amazing to have a house that is built off grid to be parked in the middle of nowhere and you still got water, running water, fresh water, uh, solar, uh, power, everything. And it runs a whole AC unit in the house. I'm still amazed to it this day, but it's just, it's cool. Owning my own business wasn't really on the table for a long time. I was working from four o'clock in the morning to five at night with my stepdad for a year landscaping. Then I would work, I started my handyman company from 5.30 to 11, 12 o'clock at night. And I did that for a good year and it was miserable. Absolutely miserable. I had an idea, I designed out the mansion model. It was 24 feet, two lofts, that kind of stuff. We found a place in Scottsdale and it was the back of a cheer gym and I was building right next to cheerleaders. So we built there for a couple months and then what we did is debuted it at the Home and Garden Show and we had hundreds of people in line for all weekend. They had to shut down half the show. They had security. I mean, there was ropes everywhere. It was absolutely insane. And then we just never looked back. I kind of miss building, but I'm always here. You know, I like little projects like our adventure series. I was building the first prototype by myself with my buddy, just in the back of the shop on the back burner. And it was kind of fun because we didn't know what we were building. We just started and just kept going. And then it developed into something. And that's kind of how you do, you tinker around. You figure out if it's viable or not. You show somebody if they like it, maybe they'll buy it. If not, it's kind of what I wanted. So <laughs> at least I have one. So this is our Avenger series. So this is my take on an RV, but a camping rig that actually is worth something. It's 15 feet long, has a full kitchen, full size bathroom. It actually has a full stand up shower, not like the RV showers that are very awkward. We want to make sure it's comfortable. So basically you could take four guys hunting in the middle of nowhere, two weeks to a month, but have everything on board that you need. We did all terrain tires to get it a little bit off the ground. We torture tested our prototype. We couldn't even break it. There's 150 gallons of fresh water available, gray water tank, full solar, uh, dual uh, fuel generator that will push the AC unit, uh, infrared heating. I mean, it's endless. We do spray foam as well. So this is kind of my off the grid monster that I wanted to design because there was nothing on the market like that. Uh, we have regular dual pane windows, heating, cooling, fail safe system. So we have backups on top of backups. All right, so this is the inside of our Adventure Series. We are actually under construction, obviously, still. Um, you guys are standing in the kitchen right now, which is not there yet. Everything is identical to tiny homes. It's just a little bit more up on heftiness, I guess you could say, uh, just to make sure you could beat the hell out of this thing. The whole entire unit will run indefinitely as long as you have sun because of the solar system, the battery bank and all that stuff, except for the AC unit. You just have to run the generator for that. But we do have an infrared heating system that runs off of propane. That's why we have this tube here. This is all mechanical. So even if you're in cold temperatures and you lose all power and everything, you could still heat the whole place. So we wanna make sure we have the fail safes that are mechanical, not technology in this type of unit. It ranges from uh, 35,000 up to 55,000, just depending on how crazy you want to go with it. I do this because I like to build. I like to build different things. Um, I like a challenge and tiny homes is a challenge sometimes just because somebody has weird ideas or crazy ideas. I have to figure out how to get that image across. I care about the guys that work here. I care about the clients that come in unless they're mean. I don't, you know, I, we don't deserve that. But I always like my work to speak for itself. Like I've had contractors come in here and builders and they're like, you know what? I've seen a lot of tiny homes and your quality is by far the best. 
and that's all I care about. I go to shows and I'm just quiet. We don't sell anything. We just show the houses and stand there. Do you have any questions? It's just nice to hear the people come out and be like, by far the best one at the show, best ones. Oh my God, these are amazing. Or they freak out, be like, this is the mansion model. I've seen this. It's rewarding because when you see the product come out and people are just amazed about it and just love it. And you know, we appreciate it. We love our tiny home, that kind of stuff. It makes you feel good because you're actually helping somebody's life. It's just enjoyable to just have people appreciate what you do. It makes you want to come to work in the morning.